Hey up everyone. Well, you might have seen the latest oh, marketing oh, film oh. via MCN. I'm saying nothing about them being a bit late to the party. But there are a lot of questions I can't get answered and some information I have found that no one else seems to be talking about. So here we go again and first, one of the things that everyone's been waiting for. On MCN's dyno, the Calva 800X Super Adventure put out 81 horsepower at the back wheel, which from a claimed 94 at the crank seems more than the 10% loss I would have expected, but is probably a fairly accurate figure. Then we come to the weight. The weight with a very full tank is now confirmed at 195 kilos with all the standard fittings like the protection bars included, but it isn't clear if that was the standard or pro model. It wasn't the rally because that isn't here yet. What do these figures mean and how do they stack up against the Tenere 700 and Tuareg 660? Well James E from Devon on the UK Tenere forum gives us some accurate figures for once and I have to credit him for his detailed breakdown. It is better than Yamaha's. On the scales the weight of the Tenere 700 was 214 kilos with a full tank of fuel. But his bike isn't standard, so there are a few adjustments. Yamaha crash bars add an extra 5 kilos exactly, which are included on the Kove in its overall weight. Yamaha heavy duty skid plate an extra 3 kilos exactly, that replaced the stock plate which is about 500 grams. So net weight difference is about plus 2.5 kilos. There is a standard plate included on the Kove, which looks a lot better than the standard T7 one but it's not as good as the heavy one. End cannon link pipe was swapped from the stock ones with a saving of around two kilos and the tyres will be a couple of kilos extra compared to the Pirellis. So while this isn't 100% accurate, a fully fueled wet weight on the standard bike would be around the 205 kilo mark, but it's closer to 215 kilos with crash bars and the heavier skid plate. I can't find anyone who has done the same for the Tuareg 660, but the spec is 187 kilos dry with an 18 litre tank. So that gives us around the same 205 kilo point. And the 80 horsepower at the crank the Aprilia produces equates to around 70 horsepower at the back wheel maximum. So the Cove 800X Super Adventure comes in at between 10 and 20 kilos less than both the Tenere 700 and the Aprilia Touareg, depending how you want to compare it. And it gets more power than both. Also, there is plenty of talk about how the Kobe doesn't get so top heavy when the tank is full. And the tank is concentrated more in the space behind the engine for sure. So beyond that, what more can be said right now? Well, GPX will continue to control sales and distribution of the 450 Rally, but they will not be acting as distributor for Kove 800X Super Adventure. In April this year, Kove Motor Holdings Limited in Hinckley in Leicestershire was incorporated at Company's House. Then, in May, a second company was incorporated as Kove Motor Limited. The first address used for Kove Motor Holdings was at a local rugby club near Hinckley, whereas for Kove Moto Limited, an address in Nuneaton was used, but shortly after the registered address for Kove Moto Limited was moved to the Hinckley address. Then we had an announcement from MCN that a UK wide distribution point was to be set up in Oxford somewhere. Now, in the latest press release, they're saying that four dealers will be appointed one for the north, one for the south one for the east and I imagine one in Wales for the west of the country. This seems to show they've obviously realised the single point of distribution won't work, so I guess that's something. With little information other than the name of the director of both companies, I started to dig a little and reached out to the director personally via his other companies, but so far I've had no answers at all. A website has now gone up and we are told that someone called Lee Westbrook is dealing with inquiries, but that's something I literally only found out today, so I eagerly await a response. 
I can't find any industry experience he has outside of Ciron, but at least he does seem to like MX in the bits that I have seen about him. The new director is a man called Andrew Shepard, who runs several companies and is a director at the company who controls UK distribution of Ciron electric motorcycles. He's also a director at All 4 Limited, who operates a sales and hire company dealing with the Polaris side-by-sides. What I didn't find, which was what I wanted to see, was any previous connection to the motorcycle industry, and as I said, what I haven't had is any answers to my inquiries so far, but I will keep you posted. I've been trying to find out about details of the engineering changes that have been made to the engine. This is what I have been looking most for. Luckily, I do have my contacts elsewhere and a small amount of ability to understand spoken Chinese. So we do have some information, but still not enough for me. One of the things I've been concerned about is the now well-established issues with wear on the cams and associated surfaces in the head of the KTM 790 and 890 engines. I've never been a fan of plain bearings and this does remind me of the debacle with the early VF750 Hondas. Cams made from cheese are nothing new, but KTM seem to be refusing to take any responsibility on this at all. And with their guarantee having so many exclusions, it leaves owners who ride with a serious long-term issue. Part of the problem does appear to be ineffective hardening on some of the surfaces, but it does appear that the oil waste of some of the cam bearings are less effective than others. This would mean looking at redesigning the oil feed path or possibly increasing oil pump pressure. So far, what I have seen shows that Kobe have redesigned the cam followers using a DLC low friction coating, and this might solve one issue, but unless the redesign has gone further, it might create others. It doesn't alter the self-eating cam issue. The next question I've been waiting on answers for is about the suspension. I know the suspension is Kiaba, we know they are fully adjustable, and we have had the travel figures. They are included in the video linked above if you don't know, but there is more I wanted to know. What you might not have heard is that there have been issues with the Kiaba suspension used on the Tuareg 660 front end. This highlights an issue I've been talking about for longer than the Tuareg's been around, and I will go into it more in time. But the industry has come up with all sorts of marketing bullcrap to try and convince people that it's a great idea to separate compression and rebound damping. So one fork leg controls compression damping and the other controls rebound damping. What this means is that if I'm four hours away from home and a fork seal decides to let the contents of the front empty itself, then there will either be no compression damping or no rebound damping, as one of the forks can't work without any oil in it. Now that would make for a horrible and potentially dangerous ride home, or calling a breakdown wagon. Neither options are ones I like. My question was has the same system been used on the Covey? And unfortunately, it appears that it is a similar split system. And despite loving Kiaba suspension in general, this makes me concerned, especially when there have been so many reports of poor quality control on the assembly at Kiyaba with the Tuareg system. There have been all sorts of problems, and the worst I've seen were distorted pressure plates and even cartridges being installed the wrong way up. I will keep you posted as things progress, and I will keep feeding back reports from customers happy and not so happy in other countries. Nellis, our Scandinavian friend in China, is still loving his, and I will link him in the description. The Kobe 510X has a proper system, with both rebound and compression damping in both fork legs, so I really don't understand why the 800X Super Adventure models have the split system other than it's cheaper. Anyway, it seems for now, Kobe Moto UK are content to keep pushing the marketing of the 800X Super Adventure via MCN, and I probably haven't done myself any favours by being so blunt, but as you know, that is my way. 
I've heard too many years of marketing bull to take any notice of it. What I can also reveal is that even though we haven't had the first three models yet, there is also a new Kova 800X Super Adventure Touring model coming out. I have no idea when it will get to the UK, but the main difference just seems to be a 19 inch front wheel and hard cases included. There's no news as to if we will get the 500, 510 or 525 X adventure bikes, the 4 pot 400 RR sports bike or the 250 and 450 CC MX bikes. I assume with the Saron connection that we will probably get the Kove electric bike at some point now though. It does seem a bit odd that distribution is being split between the two companies and I would like to know more about what has happened since April when I was told the 800 Xbox for the UK were on their way. Who knows what the future will hold. What I am sure about is that I'm more likely to listen to the existing customers in different countries than the journos who we all know are paid off in one way or another. For now, all we can do is continue to wait. Still. I hope you've enjoyed this video and can take the time to look around the channel to watch some of the others you will find there. If you got this far and haven't already, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. Subscribing helps us a lot and will mean you get to find out first when our regular updates, news, views and other videos go out. Please share the video with anyone you think will be interested if you could too. It all helps kick the YouTube algorithm into gear and gets the channel out there to new potential viewers. You can visit the website or the Red Bull shop linked in the description below for the best biker t-shirts and other merchandise too. There are more exciting motorcycle adventures and other stories from the shed and beyond on the website, so why not grab a cuppa and take a look around, you won't be disappointed. Thanks for watching, I hope you get some great riding in, and remember, keep your spanners close and your keys even closer. Ride free everyone! <laughs>